Howdy folks, it is Monday, May 23rd, and you're listening to episode 9A of the Bad Dog Book Club. This week's episode is Carnal Shock by Ronnie Callan, and we're doing something a little bit different and hopefully something you guys really enjoy this week. Alex Vance will be narrating the story, but Toonses will be playing one of the characters, and Ronnie will be playing one of the other characters. We hope you enjoy it, because we'll be discussing it next week. Let us know what you think. Carnal Shock, written by Ronnie Callan, read for you by Alex Vance, Toonses, and Ronnie Callan. Jerry sat in the student union, waiting. His eyes drifted between the clock on the wall and the door of the university's local gay club. 7.28 p.m., two more minutes. His timing was flawless. It had been a month since he arrived at Trude and Fair University since his transfer from Toronto, and he was fitting in pretty nicely. He attributed such social skills to his personality, charm, and attitude. Or perhaps people around this university just had a fondness for Dalmatians? Either way, he embraced everything this new campus offered him with earnest. Unfortunately, since moving out here, he hadn't given himself much chance to indulge in the more carnal pleasures he regularly partook of back in Toronto. The occasional romp with a good friend, maybe hitting a bar for a one-night stand, he was always open for that. He certainly fit the old adage of... Dalmatians are such sluts. He didn't deny it, and certainly had no shame in it. In fact, the very thought fueled the smirk on his face. But he didn't know any gay bars in the area, so the gay club at school was the next best thing. He only joined the club last week. Admittedly, he didn't share the same interests the other members had. No, he was looking for one thing. Again, he had no shame in it. And right on time, the door opened with several members of the club walking out, among them a cheetah, ferret, fox, otter and raccoon. Jerry's eyes immediately fixed upon the fox. The way his tail swayed along with his fluid body movements was mesmerising. Jerry had always liked foxes. They always thought they were the slyest bunch of fuckers out there, and they'd often have these stupid grins on their faces when they thought they could pull a fast one on you. He enjoyed proving the bastards wrong. Not to mention, they were also better in bed than any other species he'd had, and easily the best bottoms. Why foxes were so known for bottoming, he didn't know, nor did he care. He was definitely in the mood to have his knots squirming around inside one, though. And, again, Dalmatians had their own stereotypes, so he wasn't one to talk. He had trouble remembering this particular fox's name, though, but he'd get it soon enough. As they all went their separate ways, the fox himself remained in the Union, seating himself on a beanbag not too far from Jerry before opening a book. The spotty waited for another two minutes before approaching him, Best not to seem too quick or desperate. Hey there, buddy, he greeted with a smile, sitting on a beanbag opposite the fox. Ah, hello, you're Jerry, right? You just missed one of our meetings. He smiled back. Yeah, I just arrived a couple minutes ago. How'd it go? It was great. We're actually thinking about holding a fundraiser at the next convention. Would you care to join us? Sure, I think I could do that. He wagged. What was your name again? I'm Sam. You just joined last week and you forgot my name already? You're not going to last very long here with the memory like that. He grinned. One of those stupid fox grins. Jerry played it off with a chuckle. Well, after tonight, I don't think I'll have trouble remembering your name anymore. After tonight? Sam arched the brow, closing his book. Yeah, I was hoping to get to know some of my fellow members more. Is that so? He leaned forward, narrowing his eyes. Yeah, is something wrong? Jerry's tail froze. Right, why don't we just cut to the chase here? The fox's voice was suddenly terse. What? Look, I'm not stupid, okay? You joined the club just for a quick fuck, didn't you? Jerry suddenly went silent. Damn, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. You know, this university has come a long way. We've established a very respectable reputation for gay rights. The club here isn't meant for horny fuckers like you to go whoring around or looking for one-night stands. We're trying to teach people that we're better than that. The words stung slightly. For the first time in his sexual endeavors, Jerry was actually feeling shameful. Good thing they were the only ones in the union because that felt humiliating. He lowered his head. You're right. I'm sorry, dude. That said... Sam leaned forward even further, almost in Jerry's face. You Dalmatians are still the sexiest things I've ever seen. 
He brought a paw around Jerry's head, pulling him into a kiss, much to the dog's surprise, who quickly melted within Sam's grasp and muzzle. Foxes, always being sly and cute. He was certainly a great kisser, though, and Jerry made note of that much. The spotty's tail was wagging once again when they parted. I haven't had a good romp in a long while, Sam chuckled, licking his lips. Pretty funny move, Sam. I think deep down you like it just a little bit. So, do you want to head back to my place or yours? I live in the North Apartments. Let's head back to your place. I'm curious to see what the North Apartments look like anyway. Jerry smiled. It was just a short walk to the fox's place, and in no time at all they were both naked and lying on Sam's bed. Jerry on top of Sam, deep in each other's muzzles, in another kiss. It was definitely a kiss unlike one Jerry had shared before. The synchronized movements of their muzzles, the fox's strong, sweet breath, and the way he manipulated their tongues kept the spotty wanting more and more. Both tongues entwined with a mutual enjoyment and lust, evidenced by the pre-cum they leaked onto each other from their throbbing erections. Ready, Sam? Jerry asked, grabbing the bottle of lube on a nearby table. I don't think so, babe. Sam interrupted. Huh? I'm not bottoming. You are. He grinned again. Another one of those stupid fox grins. Sam quickly rolled them over, switching positions so now he was on top. Son of a bitch, Jerry had never been topped by a fox before, so this was definitely a surprise. Before he could even say anything, Sam kissed him again, and this time he dominated the Dalmatian's muzzle. Again, what a kisser. Their tongues danced with an increasingly heated fever, and a small moan erupted between them as chocolate-coloured paw massaged one of Jerry's cute black ears. Now, he snickered. Are you ready? I love how you think I'm just going to roll over for you so easily. Jerry coyly waved a finger. Oh, I think you will, and you'll enjoy it, too. And what makes you think that, hmm? Jerry shot back with a grin of his own, still standing his ground. This was one of those times he triumphantly put those damn foxes in his place. Or not. Well, you certainly love the way I kiss, obviously. If you didn't, you wouldn't be so happy to suck on my tongue so much, am I right? Before Jerry could even respond, they were making out again, almost as if to prove Sam's point. The Dalmatian wasn't going to deny it in the least. He fucking loved kissing, and this fox was considerably more special in that regard than any other he'd bedded. And when they parted... They were gazing into each other's eyes with such a lustful sparkle. He knew Sam was probably special in other ways, too. He might be onto something. And your point? Jerry lost his grin. Right here. The clever one took Jerry's paw and ran it along the length of his own vulpine shaft, suddenly, selfishly, in pleasure from the sensation of the spotty's velvet pads. You really enjoy my tongue? What makes you think you won't enjoy this? Even more. He spoke in between heavy breaths. The dog certainly couldn't argue with that logic. And the more he stroked that gorgeous erection, the more curious he became. He even let his fingers travel downwards, pads massaging the thick flesh in such a tantalizing manner, while his eyes watched Sam's face, delighting in that lustful spark that increased in those light blue eyes. He squeezed the fox's knot, causing Sam to moan aloud, and the moment he did, Jerry's right paw was on the back of his head, pulling him into yet another kiss, and he moaned right along with him. If he was going to bottom, by God, he was going to have this fox at his mercy first. That was fun, watching Sam squirm above him as they kissed, and again, he greedily sucked on that tongue like it was some kind of delicious frosting, and it might as well have been. He certainly tasted differently than any other fox he'd had. Sam was almost whimpering from intense stimulation to his nod, and he involuntarily thrust it against the spotty's paw. Jerry enjoyed every second of it, seeing the fox get so worked up under his fingers. The Dalmatian knew he was in control now. With another moan, Sam broke their kiss again, panting. I think you see my point now. He emphasized the double meaning of his words. I sure do. Jerry winked and licked the fox's nose before turning over to lie on his stomach, presenting himself. I'm all yours, Sammy. His grin returned with a vengeance. The fox may have won, but at the same time, Jerry was so excited, horny, and just plain curious about it all that he might as well have won, too. He hardly ever bottomed for anyone, let alone foxes. He was always the one topping them. But he liked the thought of a reversal, especially for a fox as special as this one. Sam chuckled. Good dog, he said as he gladly looped himself up. Shut up and fuck me. The Dalmatian snickered in return. 
He definitely didn't expect to say such words, at least not tonight. But this was going to be a special night, as special as the fox nibbling so teasingly on his ear. That hot breath washing over his ear, their combined musky arousal, the anticipation of bottoming and being tied with that voluptuous knot, it made Jerry more excited about this romp than any he'd had in a long time. All the stereotypes he pondered about foxes, though, came to a screeching, or more accurately, a moaning halt, as Sam eagerly penetrated him. Jerry quickly gripped the sheets, digging his nails into the purple fabric. His muzzle erupted with a stream of uncontrollable moans, and his world quickly faded to black as Sam's entire shaft throbbed within him. Oh, God! He panted, writhing under the vulpine in a sea of subtle pain and sheer pleasure. He was ready to scream out and announce his bliss to the world of how good this fox felt inside him. The lack of bottoming left his rump tight around Sam's foxhood, so much so that Sam almost lost his footing from the intense stimulation. He lowered his upper body onto Jerry's back, loving the feel of the other spotty short fur ruffling against the thicker fur of his own stomach and chest. His hot breath bathed the Dalmatian's ear again, almost sparking in a whisper as he dragged his tongue along the floppy length. Dalmatians had the cutest ears. Jerry could hardly take it. He wanted more. He almost begged for it. He clenched his muscles around that delicious foxhood, which only made Sam all the more eager as he drove himself hard and deep into that wanting rump time and again. You're so cute, the vulpine managed, almost in a blissful moan, dragging his tongue along Jerry's neck to accentuate their passion. It was a total win-win situation. Jerry was having his fox, while Sam having his Dalmatian, and all the while those original perceptions about foxes collided and diminished each time Sam's hips became flush with Jerry's. The spotty's body rocked forward with each powerful thrust, and his nails poked holes into the bed sheets. The stimulation to his prostate was almost overwhelming, and it left him leaking like a fire hose. He constantly wondered why he hadn't bottomed much before. Oh, the waste of times and opportunities! Sam was easily a better top than any other guy who topped him in the past, and it was reaffirming with every throb and squirt of pre-cum from that vulpine cock. Jerry loved every second of it. The fact was especially prevalent with the way Sam's knot pushed further and further into his rump. It was maddening. He wanted more than anything to be tied to this fox and filled to the brim with the impending rush of Sam's cum, flooding from his eager rump. It was so close. Jerry could almost taste it, and he began bucking back slightly against the fox's thrusts. They both closed their eyes, basking in each other's musk and movements. Jerry's bucking pushed Sam over the edge, and the room was suddenly filled with moans bouncing off the walls as he shoved his knot into that earnest rump, tying them together. His teeth sunk lightly into the fur of Jerry's neck in a playful bite, followed by a muffled groan as they both spurted at almost the same time. Sam flooded Jerry's depths with his vulpine cum, and the Dalmatian uttered the cutest of noises, something between a moan and a sigh. At the same time, Jerry's cum pulled onto the blankets below him. They both panted, opening their eyes up once again. Come here, you. Sam's arms held Jerry closely, as he rolled them onto their sides for an affectionate snuggle. Jerry, meanwhile, was still writhing, squeezing his tail hole against that wondrous length inside him. I told you you'd like it, Sam said with an exhausted chuckle. Jerry had to gather himself for a moment, still somewhat dizzy in their mutual afterglow. His paw settled on top of Sam's, smiling like an idiot. I'll never think the same way about foxes again. His tail whipped against Sam's stomach and chest. Stereotypes aren't always true, are they? Jerry glanced back to see Sam had one of those damn grins again, and the vulpine leaned over his shoulder to give him a kiss, grinding himself inside the dog. It wasn't as raw and lustful as their other kisses. They were too exhausted for that. No, this was a sweet kiss, a tender one. Their tongues didn't so much dance as mingle. It was probably Jerry's favorite, and he almost found himself chasing Sam's tongue when the fox parted muzzles. I've got an idea. If you actually start coming to our meetings from now on, I'll make sure to give you all the foxy sex you want. Topping and bottoming, of course. Think you can handle that, gorgeous? You've got me there. I'll take that in a heartbeat. He squeezed again, leaning back to grab another kiss. Another sweet one. And just like that, he was pulled into an offer he absolutely couldn't refuse. Goddamn foxes. 
that sly, gorgeous fucker still pulled a fast one. Apparently some stereotypes never change. Carnal Shock Written by Ronnie Callan Read for you by Alex Vance Tunsis and Ronnie Callan